Hi everybody, it's Louisa here and I'm finally doing my tutorial on a loaded envelope. Not a loaded bag, I've done that already. Um, but a while back I did a loaded envelope in a Facebook group um, swap uh, called Crafters with Artitude and we did a loaded envelope swap. So I meant I had asked if anybody would want a tutorial and I did get a couple of um, requests. So finally getting to it and I thought I would go ahead and use my digital kit which I do have available for sale. It's a digital file so it's not a physical file but um, I'll post a link to my blog below where you can purchase this if you want to print out your own copies. So this kit is called Sweet Winter and I didn't print out everything for it. I um, just print out some of the solids. I did print out some of the cards but let me show you what um, the preview looks like. So you're going to get all these backgrounds which print out to 8.5 by 11 and then you're going to get um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 other sheets that will print out some file folders. You get 4 file folders, 3 library pockets. You'll also get a sheet where there's like 4 tags and then some like script, you know, for the holidays. Then you get a sheet of just little images to cut out. Of course, they're all going to be able to print on 8.5 by 11. And I just use a 110 pound cardstock that I find at Walmart from, it's called Georgia Pacific. That's the brand. If anybody's interested, but I, you can get it online, walmart.com, or just at Walmart. Or anywhere else, you can get a 110 pound weight cardstock. The last sheet that you get is like a larger card sheet, which is in fourths. And then there's another um, bonus with when I used to sell this last year. You had to buy it separately, but now I've thrown it in for one price. And it's the, um, I call them journal cards. I think they're two and a half by three and a half, which is the same size that you would put in like a pocket letter. So if you wanted to do pocket letters, you can use that too. And they're also, they're like this as a collage. And then they're also separate files in your file when, when you buy this. Okay. So again, the blog um, where I sell this, the post, will be down below. So just go there and then follow the instructions. Okay, so I'm going to show you before I get started some of the things that I have been doing with my collection. I'll leave this here. I wanted to make a few things to coordinate with this. Now, I did share this a while back, I think, when I had done the um, last pocket loaded um envelope and I had already made these back then so these are some of the images that are in my collection so I just made wands out of them so this this and this is a cutout and then I had made this this cake stand is a cutout and I put the glitter on there this um, piece here and this piece is a cutout so I just made these wands to go with it and then I wanted, usually I like to do at least three wands in either a pocket, loaded pocket or a loaded bag. So I wanted to make a third one using just the paper itself. One of the background papers, which I used most of it up. I was just left with this. So I was trying to cut up some more and I'm going to show you what else I did. Um, so I made, using files in my, um, what do you call it, Silhouette Cameo file <laughs> I have a pinwheel that I could cut so I did that and I didn't print the back now you can totally print the backs of these if you want but being that this is shabby chic I figure I'm gonna leave white backs because it's gonna go I did ink the edges of these images this and the other piece I'm gonna show you with some uh, frayed burlap so I'm probably gonna be using this as I go making this loaded envelope <clears throat> So I just use a silver straw, which I think I got this from Michaels. And then there's the back. Okay, so I do have tutorials. Now, I, I'm i not able to go and look up links for my own videos only because I just don't have the time. It's either do a tutorial or take the time and look for links, which I'm just not going to have time to do that. Um, so just, you know, go to my... I want to call it my uh, main page on YouTube and you'll see where it says videos and then click on that and then there's a little search bar where you can type in what you're looking for so 
I got pinwheel starts to finish or tutorials. I've got wand tutorials. Um, all kinds of things. Anyway, so the other thing that I cut was this. And this one I've never done before. This particular silhouette file is three pieces. It has this loopy kind of bow. It gives you two, two different sizes. And then the, the tails. So I thought that was pretty. And then I just added a halfback pearl sticker. I don't recall the file name and my program is closed right now. And then the next one would be this one and I made a paper clip and usually I like to add a few of my own uh, paper clips to these uh, loaded envelopes and loaded pockets but I'm most likely going to be making at least one or two more to go with this. But again, I was using up that paper. So this, I do have the punch, and I'm going to show you. This is a um, the Paper Studio Punch, which is found at Hobby Lobby. Let's see if you can see the reindeer. It's a three and a half inch reindeer. It's a gigantic punch, but it's well worth it. I've used it for a lot of things. And I did brush very lightly some Wink of Stella just for a little bit of sparkle. And then on the antlers, I decided to try something different that I've never done. Was just put some, I mean, I've done this before, but never on this reindeer. And this, I think I found this at Walmart. It's called, what's the color? I think bubblegum. Yeah, bubblegum that I found at Walmart. I just love the combination of you know different shades of pink. And it's kind of thick, it's like a chunky glitter. So again, I have a tutorial on how I make these types of paper clips on my channel without the glitter. I haven't done that yet on that, but where I do double-sided and I thicken it up, it's three layers of um, cardstock in there, okay? So, let me try to move on because I'm not sure what time hubby's coming home and he usually, yeah, I have to tend to him. Oh, one more thing that I did do and um, I made a little shaker out of one of these. I have shown this one in a previous video and I had gotten the idea from another lady on YouTube, which are at the moment I can't remember her name, but... Um, so I use again some more of the scraps of my paper in the background. It's just a shabby chic. Now, if you want to just do a shabby chic project, just omit the joy and the um, snowflakes, and then you got a shabby chic little shaker. So my only issue with this one is when I put down my paper because I did use glossy accents, and then put my paper down before cutting it out. I didn't realize that my um, snowflakes were right on the edge there and they kind of cut stuck but the good thing is it's it, it stays in place and the joy kind of shows so it's not covering it and I used in here different um I don't know what those things are called now the table scatter or whatever but I used some of this and I think this one was from Michael's it's creatology so it probably is this pretty jumbo glitter which is kind of translucent I think it's a mixture of translucent and then the shiny ones in there. And and then just the uh, shapes. That was it. I could have put the other glitter in there and I probably should have, but that's okay. So this it eventually is going to go on to something else. Um, I left out this paper clip, so I was thinking that maybe making like a big rosette or some tool back there. And maybe doing something like this. I thought that would be cool. But for now, we're just going to work on the envelope. I need to scoot all this stuff over. And let me show you the packaging of that envelope. I find these at the Dollar Tree. And I'm not sure how many you get. It says eight. I don't remember there being eight in here. I think there's only two at a time. I don't think there's eight in here. Maybe it's just called an eight clasp. Anyway, they come packaged like this. It's the Jot brand and yeah. So the size is a six by nine, which is the average size of envelope 
um, loaded envelopes that I've seen on YouTube. So here we go. And I, I've only made this once before, so I'm going to be editing because I don't even remember what I did last time. But I think I had left, I don't even know if I had this on here last time. All right, so you get your paper. I'll put that to the side for now. Then you get your pocket and you flip this in. So you don't need that flap. Yeah, I do remember that much. All right, so what I don't recall is what I did with that. Did I leave it or did I just glue over it? Here's one of my papers, one of my images from the digital file, and I was thinking I wanted to use this. I really want to make this very shabby chic. So you're going to see, you know, by doing this, putting it to the edge, see what part you're going to show off. If you don't want the bird, and maybe you can go over this way. So I decided I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to take... A pencil because I do not like to measure things unless I absolutely have to another thing that you could do if you really want a finished envelope is you just take wrap it around go like this and then you can put another piece over here but it also will make it a lot thicker and I like to actually finish my sides with trim and cover up anything that you might see. So, let's make it. I haven't decided what papers I'm going to be using throughout this whole thing. All I know is that's the collection that I want to use. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't do too many tutorials because I don't like to think that far ahead. I just decide, okay, this is the collection I want to use, you know, let's go. So it could take me like hours before I pick what sheets I want to use in the front or the back. But I know that this is the one that I wanted for my back. And hopefully it's not too short. And it looks like I did do it too short. Oh well, maybe not. Oh, looks like I'm okay. And now what I'm going to do is... Um, mark this part off so I'm just putting it really close to the edge here and I'm going to mark the top part and then just cut that off I'm just trying to line it up as good as possible okay and always keep these pieces here because you can do a lot of things with this you can punch out shapes, turn them into little tags, fold them in half and you got a little card. When they're big enough like this, there's always something that you could do with it. So I just put them to the side. Alright, so that's our back. And I'm going to write it here so I remember back. So now I want to see what I want on the front. And um... You know, I have, I'm going to post a link to my first shabby uh, chic loaded envelope. I had made it for Olga. Again, it was for a group swap. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to rip this off. Maybe not. I thought I could take it off. Only oh, because I think what I want to do is... Okay, it's not that easy to take out, but since I am covering both sides of this with paper, that's okay. So I took off this thing because what I'm going to be doing is the, an opening here so you'll be able to see in there. So that's why I did that because I don't remember how I did it last time, that front part. Oh, okay, so we got that. And then here, whatever paper I put down... You're barely going to see any of it only because, first off, we're going to be opening up this top section. Secondly, I'm going to be putting a pocket down here. So, the pocket 
is where I'm going to see a little more, even though even that's going to get covered up with more stuff. So, yeah, don't overthink it when you're picking out papers for it, places that you know you're going to be covering up. Um, let's see, I have some papers. One of the things about my digital kits, um, and I know right now I'm only selling one, but eventually I'll put more up there again, um, is even though this is a winter theme, you know, Christmas, winter, there's a lot of papers in here that you could just use for anything. Um, like right here, this is totally just shabby chic. This here, you know. So I'm just trying to pick out something that it won't matter. And then, yeah, I'm going to do it that way. So, it's going to be the same size as the other one, so I'm just going to take that other one and mark. And then I'm just going to cut. crooked for some reason. Okay. So we have our front. Our front. Again, it's going to get slit here and curled up. And then over here, there's going to be a pocket. Here's our back, which is upside down. So now I need to pick out two more sheets for the insides because I want this finished on the inside. When everything is get, gets pulled out, when this part is curled in or out, you're going to see that inside. So, um, let, all right, we're going to, we're going to use this one here and I'm going to end up saving this part. So for this, you want it to be slightly thinner. So because it's going to get tucked inside, you want to have enough wiggle room when you slide it in. So I'm going to, where did my pencil go? I'm going to mark it where this one ends here, but I'm actually going to cut it shorter. And I want to save this Merry Christmas down here. This part right here I'm going to save. You know, you really don't need to go all the way down. But I kind of like that, you know, if you peek in, you'll see that it goes all the way down kind of thing. So I'm going to make this a little shorter also. And I don't know if you can hear my stomach. For some reason it's growling and I just finished eating. <laughs> Alright, let's cut this part first. Or should I cut the other side? I'm going to cut the other side first. Alright. Right about there. And again, save this. This would be cute for something. You could also add this into a little shaker. That would be fun. Now I'm going to double check and see if it slides in without getting caught, which it looks like I'm going to have to cut it shorter. But let me just cut this piece off first. It doesn't want to slide in, so I didn't cut it short enough. I think I forgot to cut before the line, like I said. So... I'm going to do this again. Yeah, I, I had cut right on the mark. I meant to cut before that mark. So it would be a little bit shorter. So let me try this again. Sorry about that shaking. I try to put the camera in an angle where it's almost like here, but there's no bar or anything in front of me in my way. But it's I think my shoulder keeps hitting it. All right, so this should slide in. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to do one more and I'm going to do it pretty much the same size as this for the other side. All right, so this was my front, my back. This is the inside. And now one that is going to show when you open it up. Again, I'm going to cut it the same, pretty much the same size.
this time I could cut right on my lines because I'm going exactly by that last one that I did. Okay, and then where's my other mark? All right, so. For now, we're just going to put that together, and then I'll come back with the pocket. Or, yeah, the pocket, that's what it's called, that goes in the front. So, one of the things that I'm going to do is ink my edges before I um, glue everything in. So, this was the front inside, and this is the back inside. Alright, let's go ahead and do some inking. I want to use the same inks that I've been using on the embellishments that are going to be going in here. Now these two that go on the inside, there's no need to do the, the sides or the bottom. So I think this is going to be my top here because there's a little bit of white. So uh, I'm just going to do this. So you don't really need to do this part and then over here okay but for the ones that go on the outside you want to go all the way around if you're going to be doing any inking at all you would do that now you don't wait till later just just to get it out of the way plus the ones on the inside are usually harder to do and you could always take it a step further and distress it with the um, with your scissors or with the Tim Holtz distress tool and just you know distress the edge. We're not going to do that. I've, I used to do that all the time, but it's just it it makes a mess. But the main thing for me is that I do have arthritis, and when I do all this kind of stuff a lot, it you know it bothers me and. Just this, if I keep going on and on with this, would hurt. And the distress tool would be even more painful. Alright, so we're going to start with the inside. And for this, and hopefully I have enough glue for now. Um, you do want to use a wet glue when you're going to be gluing in the inside. Because it will give you time to slip that in. Um before it sticks because if you use like a tape or a runner when you're trying to slip it in it might stop before you even get you know all the way in or you might end up crooked or something so wet glue would be better now don't worry about that one flap that's back there you can cut it off if you'd like you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and do it just to keep it less thick but you don't have to you could have just left it in there um, but we're just gonna go ahead and cut it off we're gonna have a little visitor right now Haley excuse me Haley thank you I don't know why she likes to always just pass you got a problem here come on go okay anyway Let's see if there's enough glue in here to finish this. Okay, so we're going to put our glue, which I think my thing is drying up. Is it my hole? <laughs> Alright, let's see. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to bring out a piece of paper towel. Okay, so... You don't want it too thick, because then it takes too long to dry. Now where's my top? Because that's the part I really want to make sure it's glued down. Okay, so we're going to carefully slip this in, remembering which part we have. This is the front inside, which is going to go on the top. 
You see what I mean? How you need that time to slip it in. It's already starting to stop, but I still have that little bit of wiggle room. Come on. There. All right, so I'm in. I'm going to use this to just glue that down. It's a little short, but that's okay. If things are off, I can always trim all this out and it'll be even. So, let's grab my, uh, this here so I can just make sure it's all down. I'm going to grab a paper towel. I like to have paper towels for this. standing watching me <laughs> okay so let's double check make sure nothing's stuck together all right so there's that part and now we're going to do the other one That's good enough. It doesn't need to be that much because it's going to be on the inside anyway. All right, and I'm going to flip it this way. This is the back inside. Make sure where my ink is. Here comes Haley again. Please don't touch this. All right, now we're in. <laughs> Go stretch somewhere else. Okay, now we are in. So now my insides are lined. And you don't have to look at this ugly manila color on the inside. See? Okay, so now let's stick our front. And I'm going to just um, keep using that only because a lot of times when I use my, even though this is a really good glue runner it sticks well here in Florida and in my room things after a while if they've just been sitting on my desk start to come apart and there's gonna be a lot of pressure in here because I'd like to fill these bags and envelopes you know a lot so there's a lot of pressure and things pulling up or pulling apart so I'm sorry for the car noise outside just got a lot of noisy uh, cars in this area okay so the one thing I want to make sure because I'm going to cut a slit here later I want to make sure there's enough glue to hold where I'm going to cut and you know they don't come apart as I curl things back so and I'm going to kind of smear things a little bit. Okay. And definitely take something like a bone folder and just spread that glue around. Make sure everything is down. See how the glue is coming out? At least that means that I'm spreading out the glue and my edges are going to be stuck down. Okay, I think we are pretty good. Right, now we're going to do the back. This time I got to make sure where's my top because this is a directional paper right here. And pretty much the same thing. The only thing I don't like about these and why I haven't made, you know, more of the envelope loaded envelopes I should say is it's snug you know it doesn't give 
you can't feel it as much as if you were using one of those bags that's why I've done more of the bags than this but then that's why we add pockets and I've seen some other videos where people are really adding a lot of pockets and things just so they can keep adding more I'm like getting glue on this is my new bone folder. I don't want to get any glue on it. Okay. I think we are good. Okay, so we're gonna let it dry because it's still wet before I cut. But look, I already have a pocket that's lined covered on the front and the back um, I am going to even out this top part so let me just get my cutter again and just even that out just going to take a few a few um, runs with this to go all the way through I don't think I went through but did I? Nope. I don't think I'll just use my scissors. And then I'm going to run ink again. I, I probably should have just made it even before I inked it. That's okay. You see how I mean it's going to be hard to ink the inside. <laughs> okay. Alright, so here we go again. Um, we're going to go ahead and cut that um, slit. And I'm going to use this Tim Holtz once just because it's going to be partially wet. And all I'm going to do is cut. And I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm just going to go about, let's see, I want to pocket about here. Just enough. Okay. And this is still kind of wet, but I kind of like that only because when I curl this, it's going to dry in that shape. So let me find, let's see, this one maybe. Let me ink these edges too. So now I have these fresh cuts. You want to ink that. I just got ink on my nail. It's a good thing I haven't done my nails yet. So I'm going to be doing them for Thanksgiving. I did that inside I don't know <laughs> but I have to do this part too that's the part that's really gonna show all right so here we go just wrap your paper your cardstock around something I got this thick paint brush and I'm going to go all the way. Okay, and then same thing with this side. I'm holding my brush to that point and I'm starting to just curl it around the brush. And then go all the way. Now this part here, I'm trying to keep this point in one spot and just moving this top part as I turn. Because you'll just keep ripping this little opening here. Even though we are going to cover that most likely. I usually like to put like a bow there. Okay. Another reason why I said to put enough glue in that center part. So your papers don't start to come apart. Now it's going to be drying out in this position. And you could either have it like this. Where it's curled this way. 
or just like this opened up which I think I might do that and I'm going I'm pinching down that point there because I am going to be gluing something there later most likely okay let's see do I want to do that because usually I'll stick like the yeah the um, ones behind that little curl there so that's the way it's gonna stay all right you see this is why we did the inside like that now it's covered you don't see the manila now you see it here um, I'm gonna be covering that or if I don't I can always take the gesso because I will be coming in later with gesso and I could just smear it on there and you won't see it or I can just ink it more and it'll be part of it too but we'll see what happens as I go okay so hopefully I can recreate what I had done at least close enough I've already in my past tutorial on the loaded bag I showed how I did one of those pockets um, so only thing with this one is I think I'm gonna make a wider um, fold for my accordion part you'll see what I mean hopefully I can get it right this time so I need a pocket to go right here I decided to use this particular sheet for that and I'm just going to take my paper put it over my thing here and I'm gonna do it backwards so I don't get any pencil marks and I'm just gonna go I want a pretty thick pocket on this this particular one but just enough space in here in case I do put that bow that I was talking about so I'm just going to mark this and then I'm gonna mark it this way the same width of my envelope and then when I cut this I want to have a fold the part that I'm going to be gluing to here so that has to be longer so here's this part right here so I need maybe up to about here so the part that I cut is not that first mark that I made but the second one and it doesn't really matter um, big enough to adhere and that will stay in place so let me just cut and it's kind of it's like bigger than a half an inch what I had marked there so that's that part put that to the side and I'm gonna cut the side over here that one we're gonna cut right on mark remember keep all these pieces okay so take this to the side for a second I'm gonna take my scoring board and you don't need to have a scoring board you just gotta have something where you can score that line and I guess I did need this so let me get the smaller one and it's actually right on that four almost so I'm just gonna go ahead and go where my four inch is This part is going to get folded in like this, and that's what you're going to glue to this part. So it's going to act like a hinge, right? And then we're going to cut two pieces that are going to go inside, which will be the accordion part, so that it could stay open. Now, before I forget, I am going to ink this. I still need my scoring board so I'm going to leave it out. I'm going to ink now I went with this pattern only because I know I'm going to make like a little arrangement here in the end it's just going to all get covered up you're only going to see some of it so it didn't make sense to use the other patterns that I had where it's just going to get covered up Okay, so that's it. And I could just go ahead and glue this down now. And I do prefer to use wet glue with this part as well. Only because I've had them come apart when we just use the tape runner or, you know, tape instead of wet glue. 
I am just about out here. Okay, and it's going to go, the flap is going down to your envelope. And I'll put it right at the edge. I'm going to just make everything all even, square it off. Now we have this and I'm going to pick a different pattern maybe this one here let's see here yeah I think that would be good enough for this part here just for some interest instead of doing it all the same um, let me see if I still have this let's see this is not the same length so you're going to cut two pieces and I think this width might be okay. We'll see. I'm going to cut it the same width of this. Just slightly shorter. Only because of this right here. You want to give a little bit of space down here. And it's going to do two of those. So one and then two. I think I can get rid of this for now. I'm just gonna double check. So now we are going to See, that's about two and a half inches. So, this is the part where I'm not good at. Because it's supposed to be a um, mountain, valley, fold, whatever. So, right now, I'm just going to go ahead. If this doesn't work out, then I'll just do another one with a different paper. But I am just scoring every half inch. And we'll see what we get. Because I might have to cut off a, sp a bit there. So it's one, two, three, four, five right now. So let's see where we end up. The part that gets glued to the back has to go in. So you're going to start with a mountain, right? So then we're going to mountain, valley, mountain, valley. So here's where it's not correct. If this part is going in, this part here, I have to have another mountain going in. So, what I am going to do, instead of having, I think if I just cut this piece off, I still have enough. I'm going to cut off this one here. So, that last one. And. So what that would be is two inches and then you're going to score three marks which be at every half inch. Okay and then it's not going to be as thick as it was going to be earlier but I think I'm still going to have more than enough room. All right? Yeah I'll have one big Guess it, which is it's gonna be a lot because I did it at a half inch anyway. Okay, so this has to be cut at two inches. Let me get my smaller. Is it two inches? Yes, two inches. Two inches. And then scored at every half inch. Okay. 
again, another reason why I don't like to do tutorials because it's not all the way thought tr through. And then again, it's mountain, valley, and mountain. So you're going here and here, and you're going to have this little gusset. Alright. I have just enough time to get the main part done, and then I can... Where's my glue? So we're just going to glue, we're going to start with one side, put that down. Now I'm going to fold this, it's going to bring it up a little bit, so you're going to have a hair of a space between this piece and, where's my pencil, in here, so that it would close, you know, this would come down. I'm going to turn it around and burnish it. Make sure that glue is spread out and down and then we're going to do the other side. And if you feel good about your tape, you know, your glue runner or your tapes, go ahead and use that instead. I just, for me, and I know it's because of, the, you know, the humidity here, they do come apart for me. So with stuff like this where I know it's going to get um, moved a lot, shoved, I'm going to be stuffing this, I'd rather just use this adhesive, this wet adhesive. And make sure that there's no glue, somehow I got glue everywhere. Make sure that this is all dry before you go and close it all off. I think that's dry. Alright, now we're going to do this part here. we got to do both of them at the same time now. Don't overdo it on the edges or you'll seal your pocket shut. So this is a little more difficult, but it's still doable. There we go. We'll just do it real quick. And I'm going to try to... You're not going to be able to see this, but I'm just sticking my bone folder in there. And then I'm going to go over here. Just get it all down. Make sure everything is down. <sighs> okay. Well, that's a good enough pocket. Yeah. So we just needed the the three. Um, what you call it? I think the last one I had done four. I had, but I had I had the extra fold. All right. So there we go. There is the basic loaded envelope envelope part of it with a pocket and you could take it further a lot of people put pockets on the back they put pockets up here you know pockets everywhere <laughs> and now you could just fill it up and it's going to be snug here not like the loaded bags that I've done before so I mean you can only go so far and it also as you could see it would take space over here as well but still you know if you're not going to be sending too too much that'd be fine so my next step um, I'm going to embellish um, I just not sure exactly how yet but let me just pull out some of the things that I had already showed you and stick them in there for example oh and also I just shared on a previous video some of these cuts from the silhouette machine from um, the store and this one's not going to go in there but I think these would match perfectly with the whole shabby chic theme as embellishments here is this let's do this 
for now. I'm just gonna let me tuck that there. Tuck this. Maybe tuck this here. <laughs> It'll be different, of course, when I do this. Something like that. And then goodies. And I also have the um, this is where you would put your paper clip. Okay, so that's that part. Um, I will be back with the embellished with the embellished and filled envelope. I won't be recording that only because it's pretty much the same thing that I had done on the loaded bag. So you don't need to see me put that together. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.